Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for the Bible study. Thank you because of your spirit that is present with us to interpret to us what he inspired. We are praying, O oh Lord, that we will not just hear and then forget that you write these words on the tables of our hearts in Jesus' name. And the grace and the strength to be doers of the word. You grant to every one of us so that our study will not be in vain in Jesus' name. Make us better as we study your word. And make our lives and service and ministry to you. Better as we lean upon you and we'll be obedient to your word in Jesus' name. Be with us all through the time of the study. We we'll pray that none of us will be absent-minded, but will be attentive to your word throughout the Bible study. In Jesus' name, we pray. We're here again for a Bible study. And I want to remind you that it's not just to come and hear the word of God, that week after week, day after day, as we listen to the word of God, and the word of God is having impact in our lives, then there will be change, there will be transformation. In the language of the New Testament, will be changed from glory unto glory. But that's not going to take place if we just hear the word, read the word, forget about it. It's when we read the word, hear the word, meditate on the word, take that word to the Lord on our knees, and pray it in, and pray it through, and allow that word, by the power of the Spirit of God in our lives, to do a transforming work. And then, day after day, week after week, as that word works effectually in us, then we'll become better people, better servants of the Lord too. Jesus said in Luke chapter 11, verse 28, But he said, Ye rather, blessed, are they which hear the word of God and keep it. The word to keep it there means to obey. We obey the word of God. We don't just hear the word of God. We pray that the Lord will give us the grace and the strength and the ability, the understanding that the word of God will be practical, workable in our lives. In James chapter 1, there in verse 25, but also look at into the perfect law of liberty and continue it therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. It tells us again there that the very root and the foundation and the cause and the effect of our blessing is when we're hearing the word of God and then we're allowing the grace of God to work more in our lives in obedience to that word. That's why we sang the song, Trust and Obey. There is no other way to be happy in Jesus except but to trust and obey. We're continuing in our study of the word of God in First Peter. And today we're in First Peter now chapter 3. We're moving on to verse 8. From verse 8 all through to verse 12. Please open your Bible and read with me finally. Be ye all of one mind, having compassion one and another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not trending evil for evil, or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. For ye that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no girl, let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. The first epistle of Peter is actually intensely practical. Uh, it tells us about uh, the, the believers living in an hostile world. And he knew to prepare their mind. Just like Jesus Christ himself prepared the minds of his own disciples. He told them, in the world there will be disharmony, there will be discord, there will be conflict, there will be hatred. But then he told them how the peace of God will guard them and guide them. And the peace of God will be like the referee, like the umpire in their heart. The believers then were not left in darkness. That there will be persecution in the world. There will be trials in the world. There will be suffering in the world. But then, 
if you look at the epistle you'll find three things number one is a hope number two is a holiness number three is a harmony number one he told them that even though they'll have all those disturbances and conflicts in the world it will be like a hostile world the hopeless situation but then they shall live a lively hope and then as he moves on in the first chapter he talks about being called by the lord himself and that they were called into the life of holiness be ye holy he said because i am holy and now he comes to this section is looking at the church and is looking at the fact that the church ought to be united together that if you are living in an hostile environment hopeless situation and there is a lot of badgering and knocking and uh, throwing darts and conflicts in the world then when you come together in the family of god we shouldn't see the conflict the disharmony and the discord that we see in the world there should be harmony in the church so that we'll be able to live in peace it says if the devil is trying to disturb and destroy that harmony we who are children of god we should understand that if christ lives in us if we are saved if we are members of the body of christ it's one body and it is one faith and it is one baptism and it is one lord because of that there should be that inseparable union in the family of god there should be harmony there should be unity that's in brief uh, what we're looking at today well the topic for today is charity and compassion towards all men charity is the old english word for love when the bible was translated it's talking about love and it's talking about compassion among the people of god and towards all men outside the fold we're divided the study into three parts number one compassion and cooperation among the brethren in the lord you come to the lord you don't live an isolated life individualistic life you belong to the body of christ you touch others others touch you you relate together you interact together there should be compassion and cooperation among the brethren in the lord number two is christian conversation and conduct towards neighbors in the world jesus himself prayed i pray not that you'll take them out of the world but that you'll keep them from the evil as we interact with the people of the world walking together living together sometimes then we need to know how we relate with them christian conversation christian conduct towards neighbors in the world number three compensation or condemnation which will you have from the lord that means there will be commendation on one side there will be compensation on one side there will be the praise and the reward and the blessing on the one side but then there will be judgment and condemnation on the other side and you have a choice and i have a choice to choose one which one are you going to have compensation or condemnation from the lord let's come back to number one number one compassion and cooperation among the brethren in the lord we're looking at first peter chapter 3 and in verse 8 first peter chapter 3 verse 8 finally be all of one mind having compassion one to another love us brethren be pitiful and be courteous here you will know that he's talking to children of god and then you know that he's talking about our relationship interaction with one another and actually here he gives us a lot of elements a lot of uh, characteristics we ought to find in the household of faith if we profess to know the lord and we're in the lord he tells us we should be very very deliberate and calculating as to how we behave and relate in the church of the living god he says finally what did he say finally he's been talking to the servants he's been talking to citizens he's been talking about behavior in the family he's been talking about various relationships between the master and the servant between the leaders and the followers between the wives and their husbands and then he says finally now we now move away from the special relationship of days to this and this to that we're not talking about the generality of the children the people of god finally talking to the brethren be ye all of the same mind of one mind have compassion one and another as you relate with one another don't trample on one another don't uh, deliberately offend one another have compassion be sympathetic 
know what the other fellow wants and know what will help him and move him forward in the way of the Lord. Have compassion one on another. Love as brethren. Love not as the people of the world. Love the Lord Jesus Christ himself has given us the standard the pattern, the model, the example and he has said, as I have loved you, even so you love one another, love therefore as brethren be pitiful, you see conditions of your fellow brother and your fellow sister, he says be pitiful and he also says be courteous, you, you behave to other people, you think about the golden rule, what would I want them to do to me, if I were in their situation, you will be courteous and you'll see here it talks about the unity of the brethren and that unity of the brethren occupies conspicuous place in his part writing of the new testament jesus christ himself so remember he prayed for the uh, unity of the disciples not only that those true those who are true disciples true followers of jesus christ and they allow the prayer of jesus christ to be answered in their lives they'll have compassion they'll have unity and they have communion with one another. Uh, this uh, charity and this uh, compassion one to another. And these being courteous, courtesy one to the other. You find all through the New Testament and in many parts of scripture. Just look at a few scriptures in Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Remember I told you that the word charity uh, is uh, love. I'm sure many of us know that already. In Romans chapter 5, reading from verses 5 and 6. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in your hearts. Uh, you understand what that means? The love of God is spread abroad in your heart. It's like if you look at a sponge or you look at a foam and then uh, you pour either oil or water in that foam, it spreads throughout. It permeates everywhere. There is no corner and there is no part of your heart if you yield yourself to the Lord where the love of God will not permeate because the love of God is shed abroad in your heart. And uh, if you are a real child of God, we will see that because that love of God permeating, seeping through, getting everywhere, everywhere in your heart, in your life, we can see that love of God oozing out, flowing out unto other people. It says that love of God is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. It says when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Why did he mention that? He's saying, look at the way Christ loved. He loved the sinners. He loved the unlovable. He loved the ungodly. And that same love of God is shed abroad in your heart. And that's what we're going to do. You will not wait until they merit that love before you show the love unto them. And then the, the Bible says, be all of the same mind, one mind, be united together. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. First of all, if we're preachers and we're in this same church, we're in Christ together, preach the same thing, preach the same doctrine. Not only that, if we are walking in the church and uh, we have chance to counsel people and to help people, speak the same thing. And then if we're members of the church, speak the same thing. That's the unity of the believers. And then it says that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly, not loosely joined together not uh, just apparently seemingly joined together perfectly joined together in the same mind in the same judgment the same judgment it means the same decision we're going to take decision on anything anything in the service anything concerning our lives we take those decisions according to the word of god and there is a unity among us in uh, the passage of first peter we're studying you remember what he says finally be all of the all of the same mind that's the unity have compassion one on another and then it says you love as brethren you love as brethren we do not treat anybody in the church as if that's my enemy i i don't have anything to do with him with her we love as brethren in romans chapter 12 
Romans chapter 12 in verse uh, 15 rejoice with them that do rejoice weep with them that do weep that's the practical side of the charity the practical side of the love that really shows the love of god is shed abroad in our hands in verse 16b of the same mind one toward another be of the same mind one toward the other and then it says might not high things but condescend to men of low estate be not wise in your own conceit it's when we think we're wiser than the other fellow it's when we think that uh, we are better than the other fellow we're not able to relate together as brethren but if we know we are members of the same family it will be easy for us to love as brethren next time uh, maybe even tonight maybe tomorrow you have relationship interaction with your brother remember before you say any word before you put up any act before you do anything at all and to love this my brother like i love myself and to love this brother like jesus christ has loved him and loved me and to show that the love of god is shared abroad in my heart and any word i say any action i put forth any attitude i have it should emanate and it should flow out of the foundation and the source of love and then we're told in first corinthians chapter 12 uh, the practical implication of the love we ought to have towards one another first corinthians chapter 12 there in verse 26 it says and whether one member suffer all members suffer with it it's talking about that love about the mutual sharing consideration for one another or one member be honored all the members rejoice with it it means you will not be selfish it means you will not be thinking about yourself you are thinking about the other brother you are thinking about the other sister in the church we think about one another what will please him what will please her what will help her what will lift her up that's what we ought to be thinking about and what material things does he need does she need that i have that i can spare that's a practical love the lord is expecting will come from the people of god one to the other in first john chapter 3 from verse 14. first john chapter 3 from verse 14 we know that we were passed from death unto life because we love the brethren sometimes you ask people how do you know you are born again how do you know you are a child of god and they don't have any practical thing to tell you all they can say is that well i've been coming to church now for more than 10 years more than that we know we are sure we have the evidence within us and we have the testimony of the spirit of god within we are passed from death unto life and the difference between the old life and the new life is so remarkable and is so definite it's the difference between death and life and we are passed from death that is the old life or the old life unto life the new life how do we know that has taken place there is a conversion there is a transformation there is a change a change that is so definite anybody will be able to realize because it's the difference between life and death it says it's because we love the brethren check up then in your own heart check up in your own life if the love is not there if all you find there is hatred animosity and if all you find there is bearing grudge all you find there i don't greet so and so all you find there, i have nothing to do with so and so all you find there is that i must do something so that so and so will be this or will be that find out in your own heart because the evidence that we are born again we are converted is that we love the brethren he that loveth not his brother abideth in death he may give us the most uh, uh, job-breaking testimony i'm saved and sanctified and baptized in the holy ghost i've got this experience and got this vision i've been in the church for days length of time he that loveth not his brother abideth in death whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer and ye know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him where hereby perceive we the love of god because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down 
our lives for the brethren. It means then that if we are born again, if we are really and truly passed from death unto life, then there is a change. Something has really taken place and we know that that thing that has taken place is actually uh, the, 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 the conversion, the grace of God in our lives. And uh, Paul the Apostle knew and Peter knew and John knew and Jesus Christ also knew that if we are living together there will be times where mistaken a step on one another's toes and we might do something say something that might uh, have the tendency to hurt the brother hurt the sister what are we to do at such a time the lord jesus christ himself has told us what we're supposed to do in matthew chapter 18 verse 33 matthew chapter 18 verse 33 shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant even as i had compassion pity on thee that means then when uh, things uh, bring you together in your locality where you are living then you understand i'm to have compassion now uh, this fellow is uh, pleading like this uh, please have mercy on me i'll soon pay you please have mercy on me that thing will soon be settled it's because of this condition in our family and it's because of this situation that we've been passing through that's why i've not been able to fulfill my word i gave you the other time then you will not do like that uh, unmerciful a uh, wicked servant you will have compassion as the lord has had pity on thee in fact ephesians chapter 4 verses 31 and 32 tell us quite a number of words and quite a number of attitudes that should not be found in the midst of the children of god ephesians chapter 4 verse 31 ephesians chapter 4 verse 31 let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice you'll find it says all all bitterness uh, you know that's the thing that is in the heart somebody has offended you and maybe you say well it's over it's all right i've forgiven well let's overlook that but the thing is still there and it's like a smoke that is still in there all bitterness let you be put away from you and all wrath and all anger uh, you maybe it's anger that makes you to say something that is uh, bad towards your brother towards your sister let all that go away or clamor or evil speak evil speaking like whispering like gossiping like biting like slandering and saying things about other people that will hurt them and injure them and destroy them and destroy their families all evil speaking and all malice and you know that uh, some people that claim to be Christians, the malice is there. They will not greet. The, the malice is there. They will not uh, think about anything good concerning that fellow brother or that fellow sister. It says, let it be put away. But that's all negative. If the negative is taken away, then what comes? The light or the, the, the positive shall come. If you say darkness is negative and light is positive, when darkness goes, which is negative, then the positive which is light shall come in that's why you have a statue too and be kind one to another be kind one to another examine your action examine your attitude towards this uh, weak brother towards this uh, new convert towards this uh, so and so or maybe an old timer in the church am i being kind be kind one to another and then tender hearted forgiving one another even as god for christ's sake has forgiven you that's the word of God that he wants us to understand. And then he tells us in verses 1 and 2 of the next chapter, Be ye therefore followers of God, as their children walk in love. Walk in love. That means the Christian walk, the Christian act, the Christian life, talk in love to you. Behave in love to you. Move in love to you. Plan in love to you. Relate in love one to the other. Let love be the, uh, the, the, the whole blanket and the whole thing that covers every action of your life. Walk in love as Christ also has loved us and he has given himself for us and offering and his sacrifice to God for his sweet smelling savor. That's uh, what the Lord wants uh, from every one of us. And all those of us who claim to be children of God, that should be there. You see, in those references that we read now, it implies that you have sympathy for one another. Instead of selfishness, there will be sympathy. You know one thing is very clear. 
Sympathy and selfishness cannot abide, coexist in the same heart. Sympathy demands that there will be that willingness to forget yourself, to identify with the pains and the problems of other people, other believers in particular. That love will be pure and practical. When Christ is reigning in your heart, you'll be loving us, brethren, and then you'll keep yourself pure and you'll act as a purifying agent in other people's lives because of the love of Jesus Christ. And then it says in the latter part of uh, 1 Peter chapter chapter 3 verse, uh, verse 8 that you'll be pitiful you'll be courteous that means you are tender-hearted you are caring you are kind to other people and you are friendly you are very considerate about other people and you do to others as you desire that they will do unto you as you look at that verse all these virtues mean of one mind all these virtues having compassion one on another as well as loving as brethren and being pitiful and courteous. Everything is to be demonstrated in our lives, especially when uh, believers are suffering persecution. And even when you are going through persecution yourself, the persecution should not erase and take away Christian virtues and Christian characteristics from your life. I go now to point number two. That's Christian conversation and conduct towards neighbors in the world. We're looking at First Peter chapter 3, reading from verse 9. Not rendering evil for evil. Now he's talking really about the world. He doesn't expect that there will be evil in the church. He doesn't expect that a brother will do evil to another brother in the church. A sister will do evil to another sister in the church. He's talking about the fact that we're still in the world. And it is this present evil world. They'll do evil against you. Not rendering evil for evil. Or really for really. But contrary wise blessing. Knowing that ye are there unto called. That ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile, no deception, no deceit. And it says, let him eschew evil. That means avoid evil, flee from evil, run away from evil, the appearance of evil, and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. The word ensue there is an old English word for pursue. Pursue peace. And then he tells us very clearly there that in the world in which we're living, uh, we, we know that uh, we ought to understand that the world is going to be full of evil. There will be evil in the world. What are you to have? What are you to do when you are living in the world before you pass from death unto life? Before you became a real believer. Before you became a child of God. Before the grace of God came into your life. That's before the love of God was shared abroad in your heart. What will come is immediately somebody offends. You are thinking, how can I retaliate? How can I revenge? How can I pay him back in the coin he paid me? How can I give it to him like he has given it to me? So that he too will know that thing is painful. And maybe our parents, uh, those who are unbelievers, maybe they taught us, if they threw brick at you, you will throw stone at them. And many people have operated like that for many, many years in their lives. But now he says, are you not a Christian? Are you not born again? Shouldn't there be a change? A change of life? A change of character? A change of disposition? And a change of behavior? then do not render evil for evil the thought of revenge and the actions of retaliation they are falling to the life of a true christian who endeavors to follow christ in all things rather than repaying them evil with evil the true follower of christ will turn the other cheek and to whosoever shall smite him on the right cheek it means believers may be insulted, believers may be falsely accused while they are in the world, but they will not trend that railing for railing. That means the other fellow shouts at you, bullies on you, and calls you bad names, and um, insults you publicly, and it makes you feel humiliated as if you are not a human being, as if you are nothing. 
he will not say, I know that same vocabulary to you. I can throw it at him to you. Neither render railing, for railing we love, we bless those people that hate and hurt us so that we can show we are following Christ and we are acting like Christ in all things. While our persecutors are following the devil, the adversary, the accusers of the bread, the accuser of the brethren, we are following the Lord who in every way and at every time manifested love to his enemies. That, law, that life of constantly, consistently repaying evil with good is what we are called to so that we can inherit manifold blessings from the Lord. And look at Matthew chapter 5 and uh, remember these are the words of Jesus Christ himself. And this is the kingdom righteousness that he wants from his own disciples. And if we are really kingdom citizens, that is, we are citizens of the kingdom of God and partakers of the grace of God. This is what is asking from you. Don't say, but brother so and so is not practicing it. Don't wait for him. Sister so and so is not doing it like that. Don't wait for her. These people came before me uh, into the Lord and to the church, and they are not acting like that. Don't look at them. Look at Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 39. But I say unto you, that ye receive not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. The Lord is expecting that whatever religious uh, hypocrites do, whatever nominal Christians do, whatever people that do not have the grace of God do, those of us that profess to have the grace of God, that's the way we ought to behave. We ought to act to those persecutors in the world. In verse 44 of that same chapter, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you and pray for them we despitefully use you and persecute you. Uh, you you know that even some churches today uh, the way they are built or the way the ministers teach their people is that uh, you'll be telling uh, the Lord send that arrow back to the person that has sent it Jesus didn't teach us that send that evil back send that curse back to the people that are sending curses and uh, things so Jesus didn't teach us that all those people that hate us and they will not allow our business to prosper, will not allow this, will not allow that, do this against them kill them, destroy them and then people are fasting for many days 7, 14, 21 days so that their enemies will die that's not the behavior of a Christian love your enemies, bless them that curse you do good to them that hate you and pray for them we despitefully use you and persecute you and sometimes you'll even find that there are some people that will do evil to another brother in the church that brother did this against me if i just keep quiet like that and i don't uh, do something he will not learn his lesson we, we, i will do this i will do that so that he will learn his lesson uh, it's not that i'm being wicked it's not that I'm doing evil. I want him to learn a great lesson. That's not the way of the Lord. The way of the Lord is that if he is bad, you should be good. If he is uh, uh, showing hatred, you should show love so that you'll be able to show the life of Christ unto those uh, people that are doing evil. In Romans chapter 12. Romans 12, reading from verse 14. There, 12, 14. Bless them which persecute you. Bless, curse not. And you will see here it says, when they persecute you, persecution is trial, persecution is suffering, persecution is painful. Then it says, as painful as it may be, here is what you are to do. You are to bless the people that curse you, and you are to do good to those that persecute you. From verse 17, it says, recompense to no man, evil for evil. No man, evil for evil. Whether in the church, or outside the church, or your landlord, or your landlady, or the people that owe you money, or the people that have done evil against you, recompense to no man, evil for evil. And you find people that will study their neighbors, they see the evil practices of their neighbors, and they say, yes, I study them very well now. I know that this is a corner, the angle. They come to do evil against me. Now that I understand, I am going to repay them. That's not Christianity. 
That's not the life of Christ. It says recompense to no man, evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lies in you, live peaceably with all men. When it says if it be possible, he qualifies it. As much as lies in you. Don't let the discord start from you. The hatred. Don't let it start from you. The oppression. Don't let it start from you. And the uh, argument and the fighting and everything. Don't let that start from you. On your own side, let there be peace. It says, dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. How many have forgotten that? If your enemy hunger, feed him. But people tell us today, when your enemy is hungry, praise the Lord, that's answer to prayer. We have been saying that he doesn't want us to prosper. He doesn't want our business to grow. He doesn't want this. He doesn't want this good thing for us. Now he has lost his own job. Now he is not able to pay house rent. Now he's hungry. Praise the Lord. God is answering prayer. And these people will go to their church. They will go to their ministry. And they say, praise the Lord. This thing is working. Praise the Lord. This deliverance ministry, this is great. My enemy has lost his job. My enemy cannot feed now. My enemy is planning to run back to the village because he is, uh, there is no food for him now. They say intensify your prayer. That's not enough. Until the fire comes upon him, burns him away, and he totally dies. Don't stop your prayer. And these people think they are doing well. And in fact, they invite some of us in the church here. They say, you still stay there, my own now. And things are getting better for me. My enemies are just dying. One died three months ago. Another one died last year. And one is sick now. And the way it is now, uh, if I intensify my prayer, I know he is going to give up. And as they pray, some people are praying. And they have departed from Christianity completely. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself. Therefore, if then enemy hunger, feed him. And if he says, give him drink, for in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head. And what it means there is a melting coals of fire that will bring him to conviction. When he's doing evil to you, and you are doing good to him, and you are helping him the best way you can, then eventually will repent just like Saul cried out and said, Is that your voice, my son David? I am wicked and you are righteous. And then he says, I know you are going to reign on the throne on Israel. And when you reign, remember me. And they made covenant together. Verse 21, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. That's what the Lord has called a Christian to. And a Christian should understand that this life of the Christian is a life that will be blessing other people. Have you noticed the first Peter chapter 3? Come back to it. First Peter chapter 3, reading there in verse 10, it says, For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no girl. Refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no deceit and no deception. Let him as children away flee from, avoid evil and do good and let him seek peace and ensue it and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro, are all over the righteous. And the ears of the Lord are open to their cries. Uh, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Incidentally, you ought to know. That's a quotation from the Psalms. In the Psalms, if you come to Psalm 34. Psalm 34. There you will see where the quotation came from. Psalm 34 reading there from verse 12. In verse 12, it says, What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days, that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips from speaking girl. Depart from evil, and do good, and seek peace, and pursue it. You understand? The New Testament says, ensue it. This, uh, uh, this one says, pursue it. They mean the same thing. Uh, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. And his ears are up, uh, uh, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, and to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. So you understand then what the Lord wants and what He desires for all His children. 
I've already mentioned the fact that children of God, we don't revenge, we don't retaliate, we follow the footsteps of the Lord Jesus Christ, we love, we bless those that hurt, so that we can act like Christ every time. And then we refrain a tongue that will speak no girl. And you will not say, uh, when he gets into trouble, I'll be the first person to testify. And so that uh, something bad can come to him. Life, uh, your tongue is very precious. And the way you use your tongue will affect your life. And it can make a great contribution to your happiness in eternity. That means then, if you want to see good days, if you want to enjoy good days, even in the time of persecution, when the evil men of the world, when they are against you, all you need to do is to refrain your tongue from evil and your, your lips that you speak no girl. That means then, the presence of Satan in the world will bring painful persecution from men in the world. And yet all that shall not hinder us from seeing good days or living a truly fulfilled life if we only can refrain our tongues. It means then you can see good days, days of usefulness, days of happiness can be yours if you will banish all evil speaking, all guile, all deceit, all falsehood, all slander, obscenity, profanity from your leaves. Uh, you, you saw the reference that said, let him eschew evil. Let him do good. Let him seek peace. Let him pursue it. That means then that the secret of a good, happy, useful, fulfilled life is that we will not do evil ourselves. We will show that we are the righteous children of God because of the blood of the Lamb that has cleansed us and washed us. The one who constantly seeks the good of others, who carefully abstains from doing anything of an appearance of evil to his neighbor, who binds himself with a covenant to live peaceably with all men, as much as his lies in him, that man will see good days. Let's come to point number three now, compensation or condemnation from the Lord. That is, there is a God in heaven that watches everything that we do. There is a God in heaven that will recompense every man, every woman, every believer, in fact, every man in the world, according to his work shall be. And then it tells us in verse 12 of 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. For the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers, but his face and the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. On the one hand, positive. There is a compensation. There is a commendation. There is the blessing of the Lord. The eyes of the Lord are open to the right, are upon the righteous. His ears are open to their prayers. That's the positive side. And then the negative side, the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. It is the uniform testimony of scripture. Anywhere you go in scripture, you learn that God is happy with the righteous and that God is unhappy, is angry with the wicked. And look at the scriptures in Second Chronicles chapter 16. Second Chronicles chapter 16. There in verse 9, here the word of God tells us for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. That is, if you are following the Lord and your heart is perfect towards him and you love the Lord and you obey the commandments of the Lord, with all your heart you love him, with all your heart you serve him, then it says his blessing will be upon you. He'll show himself perfect unto the people that do righteously. In Psalm 33, Psalm 33, Verse 18, Behold, the eyes of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. The people that so fear the Lord, they say, I won't do evil, I won't revenge, I won't retaliate, I won't uh, knock that fellow because he knocked me, I will not insult him because he abused me, I'm going to leave that in the hands of the Lord because I fear the Lord, I do not want to do anything that the Lord will pick anything from me or anything with me, then the Lord will defend all those people. We're told in, some, in, in a Proverbs chapter 15, Proverbs 15 verse 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil 
and the good. That means then he sees us, he knows what we do, and because he knows what we do, that's why we're very, very careful. Uh, because the eyes of the Lord, there is an uh, there is an eye from heaven that is watching you, looking at everything that you do. If on the one hand you are righteous, if on the one hand you are a real child of God and you are carefully living the life a child of God ought to live, then the blessing of the Lord will be upon you. But if on the other hand you are not obeying the word of God and he knows what you do in secret, that it is negative, contrary to the word of the Lord, then it says condemnation will come, judgment will come, the wrath of God will come. In Leviticus chapter 26, Leviticus chapter 26, reading from verse 14. But if ye will not hearken unto me, and will not do all these commandments, what's the result? What's the uh, recompense of that? In verse 15, and if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but will break my covenant. Then he begins to tell them a catalog of evil things that will happen to them as a result of his judgment upon them. In verse 17 he says, And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. A day that hates you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursueth. He says, Actually, our enemies will not have any power over us if we are obedient to the watch of the Lord. But if, on the other hand, we leave the way of the Lord, and then we begin to do things that are evil like the people of the world. That's actually when the hand of our enemies will be able to catch us. They will be able to oppress us and even be able to destroy us. Why is that so? Because in Psalm 7 verse 11. Psalm 7 verse 11. It says God judges the righteous. And God is angry with the wicked every day. The anger of the Lord is shown uh, against the people that will not obey the word of the Lord. The people that are sinful or the people that are backsliding and they refuse to retrace their steps and come back to the Lord or they refuse to match their behavior with what they say they believe. Then the anger of the Lord will be upon them. It's because they are not humbling themselves under the mighty hand of God so they can fear him and be obedient unto him. In Jeremiah chapter 44. Jeremiah chapter 44. In verse 10, they are not humbled, even unto this day, neither have they feared, nor walked in my law, nor in my statutes, that I said before you and before your fathers. Therefore, the word therefore say means because of that disobedience. Because of that disregard for the watch of the Lord. Because of that sin they are, uh, they, are, they are persisting in, they are continuing in. Therefore, thus says the Lord of foes, the God of Israel. Behold, I will set my face against you for evil and cut off all Judah. Then we know therefore from the word of God. On the one hand, there's a positive a blessing of God for the people that are doing right. On the other hand, there's a negative, the judgment of God on the people that are doing evil. It's a, a further comment on the fact that we should eschew evil. We should avoid evil. We should run away from evil. If we're going to see good days, if we want the blessing of the Lord, and we want his ears to be open to our prayers, then we should be righteous because it's a factual fervent prayer of a righteous man that availeth much. On the other hand, the Lord sets his face against all evil doers to punish them for their evil deeds. Actually, when you look at the life of the unbeliever, many winds blow contrary against the evil doers. Evil has its own punishment inherent in it. When a person is doing evil, evil itself has a way of punishing evil doers. And the evil doer will reap and harvest of the evil that he is sowing. Not only that, the evil doer is left in the hands of the world. So that the evil world will torment the evil doer. It's more than that. Evil doers are also in the hands of Satan. Because Satan, the devil, he torments the people that do evil. But go beyond that, because the God of heaven hates evil, he also punishes the people that do evil. That's why the Lord is calling us to a life of righteousness. 
that if we really want to see good and if we want to see the blessings of God in our lives, there's something is calling us to you. come back to First Peter chapter 3, reading there from verse 8. Finally, be ye all of one mind. If it's real church, New Testament church, let there be unity. Have compassion one on another. Love us, brethren. Be pitiful, be courteous, be very considerate as we relate one to the other. And then as we will go back uh, to the world, uh, that is, to walk there tomorrow, to go to the market, to relate uh, with the people you are living with, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrary wise blessing, knowing that ye are there unto call, that ye shall inherit a blessing. Uh, for he that will love life, if you love life and you want to see good days, then refrain your tongue from evil, and your lips that you speak no girl, eschew evil, run away from evil, avoid evil, and do good, and seek peace and pursue peace, because the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer. But if we refuse to repent, the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Let's rise up and tell the Lord we need more of the grace of God so that all the good things in the word of God will come to us because we're obedient. That the evil things that come upon the rebellious people, upon disobedient people, upon backsliders, upon the people that reject and neglect the word of God, all those evil things will not come upon us. Examine your relationship with your fellow brother. Examine your relationship with your fellow sister. Are you running away from evil? And are you pursuing that which is good? Are you following after the Lord? Does your life show that you know the Lord, you love the Lord, and then you are doing that which is right in His sight? Remember, on the one hand, there is blessing for those who are obedient. On the other hand, there is uh, the negative uh, for the people that are not obedient to the Word of God.